Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. This is episode 28. Not going to be able to go over a lot of the news for this week because I have to be out of the house and on my way to a meeting for the next few days. So I wanted to put out something, at least something that you guys could grasp onto and watch and talk about. And what I did was I got the brand new uh, assistant community manager, James Pugh. Well, he's not so brand new. He's 26. He used to work at Sony and he's been with CIG for two months and he's already appeared on one of my favorite podcasts for Star Citizen and that is Sonny's Diner. Um, James agreed to come on to the show a couple weeks ago and finally our schedules worked out. And I was able to sit down with him last night just before he had to shoot the MVP um, video for this week's Wingman's Hangar. And yes, that's something that we talked about last week. So just to go over a brief little piece of the news, let's start with that. Last week I had an interview with Ben, um, and he was very, very, very nice to do it with me on like a 24-hour notice, like to come on the show and talk a little bit about the um, end of Wingman's Hangar. And before we go forward in a sober state, I would like to thank... Eric and Mike Moreland and Rob and everybody else that was part of Wingman's Hangar over there in Austin for taking time out of your day and taking time out of the schedule, the very, very busy schedule that you had to produce that for us. And I understand where you're coming from, having a full-time job, doing this, and trying to have other things in my life go on is kind of hectic. So I can't imagine what it's like making the best damn space simulator ever and trying to do a weekly show. And again, you guys were awesome. And I hope this doesn't mean the end of Wingman Tanger. I pray, um, like men said, that it becomes part of the new show. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Mike, and everyone else. And you all have, well, you all just keep kicking butt, except for you, Mike. You left the company to take on your own endeavors. I think that's pretty good. I'm sure you have a lot lined up. You are awesome at what you did for Wingman's Hangar, and I'm sure you're going to uh, be awesome at whatever you do. So thank you all, and that's about all I have to say about that. Friday came, and we had another episode of the uh, Next Great Starship Contest, and this one I thought was much better done. And there were a lot of you pulling for cryo, and I want to give a... Um, I want to give you a fairly well to Cryo and one of the other teams that I liked, which was Skyguard Fabrications. Your, your ships looked wonderful, and please don't give up on keeping them going because there's somebody like myself that will buy it later on. I promise you. Um, what I want to talk about next is going to be the people that did make it in. I was pushing for four horsemen, and they got in. And I believe the other um, group that got on was, um, if I look on my iPad, which I don't have a teleprompter, this is the best I could do, I think it was Three Dingo. And uh, Three Dingo keeps getting saved because they're a fan favorite, and they are not a favorite of the actual team that has reviewed their ships. These guys are amazing in what they do, but I think they've been overdoing it. Um, there was just a lot of detail, and I think... What they said about it was uh, frequency, too much frequency of the same stuff in the front and the back of the ship. Personally, 3 Dingo, I think it's an amazing looking ship. But with the other people, the other teams that are out there, you're all going to have to step up. Because I think Four Horsemen is going to be my favorite for now. But that doesn't mean that Chimpan... Four Horsemen, Shark Collective, Infinite, Shoe Monkey, Three Dingo, or Talon. I, how does anybody pick be between the talent of those teams? This one's going to be tough. And again, as wonderful, amazing, ta amazingly talented teams get, dis uh, get disqualified, not disqualified, but don't make it to the next round, please keep working on these ships and make them available in the modded verse in the future, because every one of you has an amazing um, concept and beautiful ship. 
So this week, it was a little bit more down and dirty with meeting the team, seeing where things are, and getting to the point of who was going to be the saves. And we did that rather quickly. And Sandy, you're doing a great job on the show now. And uh, although I was a little critical last week, it was mainly because I thought the end date should have been pushed out so we could have seen more of these other teams instead of having that mass calling that happened over a uh, couple of weeks. I mean, that body count was high, right? All right, so we're moving into the next piece, and we're going to talk about the Arena Commander weekly update. We have a date, May 29th. Holy cow, that is just over a week away. I'm away this uh, next few days at a meeting. I come back, work the weekend, and of course, Memorial Day, and then I have a few days off. And thankfully, one of those is going to be Thursday. And also, the gods have answered my prayer, and I have my X-55 Rhino coming to me on Friday. And I will be doing an unboxing and a review of that on one of my shows in the very near future. So we have a date. It's the 29th. And if you read the Arena Commander um, weekly update, there is a lot of information in there. Of course, the three main studios, Santa Monica, Austin, and... Manchester all have a piece in there. Sean Tracy from the CryEngine team, he has something in there. There's a lot of info there, and to go over it in the minimal time that I have would not be fair. So what I did is I pulled some excerpts out of it. First thing I pulled out of it was there are some screenshots on there, and they look like a brand new character model, and it is phenomenal. However, guys, when are you going to get the female model out? I mean, there are some of us out there that are female that are playing this game. And I, although I think Curly is pretty cool, especially when he dons his uh, freelancer uniform, I really want one that's more to my, you know, I want to be able I, I role play. Come on, guys. Um, and I know you're working hard. Get the dogfighting module off first and then worry about that. So here is the pieces I pulled out. The first thing was those screenshots. Let's get them out of the way. The next piece was how it's going to be rolled out. On the 29th, when it gets rolled out, whether it be that night or in the morning, it's going to be rolled out to everybody as a single person game. And that piece is going to be called the Vanduul Swarm. At that point, there are going to be people let into the multiplayer piece of the game based on their backer number. Now, I've got one in the 200s, so you're not going to be seeing me in multiplayer for quite some time. Little by little, as they bring more servers online, as they test it, as they're able to handle the traffic, they're going to add more people until they get around, I think the number was around 250,000. Yeah, there's 450,000 backers, but I think the alpha slots were right around the 250 place. If you purchased an Arena Commander Pass, you're going to be let in later after everything is set up, right? You're going to be the last group let in. At least that's my understanding. If I'm wrong, please leave a comment below. I am starting to give out prizes for people that leave comments. So if you leave comments, whether they be constructive criticism or, hey, you love the show, please make sure that you have a valid user in Google Plus so I can send you an email and we can work out how I can send you a t-shirt, a gift card, or something like that from CIG. All right. Oh, also, make sure you click that like button. I really like it when you guys do that. So the, uh, the update went on to talk about some other things that are going on, like refinements to the HUD. Um, there was some updates to the damage model on some of the ships that they went overboard with the amount of detail that the damage model had going into um, pieces that were breaking off the ship that was looking like pixie dust behind the ship. So they consolidated them into smaller parts so they wouldn't overload your graphic card or the server or, you know, just make too much for things to go on. Another piece that I liked um, about it, I don't know if this was an Arena Commander or if it was in one of the videos, and it was about the debris modeling. Um, when you're flying around, the pieces of the ship are all part of the ship. The minute that they break off, this debris engine is going to take over, and it's going to 
manage its velocity and trajectory, you know, which trajectory is velocity and um, direction. So it's going to manage all those pieces and it's going to give it an entity number in the universe. And this is important. And I didn't get this at first. All right. So you're a pirate and you go and you're trying to um, board a ship and inadvertently you blow it up, right? So pieces of the ship are floating around. Maybe it's a hornet and there's a piece of the wing over there with a gatling gun hung onto it. Well, if it has this entity number and it's a piece in the universe, you're now going to be able to go up to it and then trap her in the weapon. Um, I, I like how they explain this and I'm sure it's a lot more detailed than the short time I'm giving it, but this really does um, make for a big uh, a, a, a big addition to this type of game. And I want to talk about something else as I'm talking about the, talking about this. So we're going into our first beta slash alpha test of this uh, dogfighting module. Another game that I'm really high on, Elite Dangerous, has had one for quite some time. And that's been... Uh, since December, and there's a lot of people that are talking about, you know, if they can do it, why aren't we doing why it's why is it taking so long? So I've had the opportunity to jump into the uh, Elite Dangerous beta, and somebody gave me access to their alpha for a day, and I have chosen not to keep that access until I could do it on my own account, because I could see that, you know, things could be different. These two games take a vastly different approach to the game itself. In Elite Dangerous, there's not really going to be this story, like this lots of lore and pieces that are being built in the background. There's going to be tons of planets, there's going to be tons of things going on, but it's more or less going to be you create your own story in the universe. Yeah, there's the Dominion and the Federals, you know, that are fighting each other and other things going on, but nowhere near as detailed in the lore area as Star Citizen. Just watch my David Hobbins interview. Um, David Hobbins, wrong interview. <laughs> Just watch my video with uh, David and you'll see what I mean. Um, Star Citizen's taking a much different approach to this. You're a person in this universe, and you might be in the Elite Dangerous universe, and I might not know about this yet, but it seems like you're the ship. And although that's pretty cool, that's the way it's been done forever. Chris is taking the approach of, I want to walk around my ship. I want to go to all the different stations on my ship, and I want to be able to do things at each one of them. Star Citizen is a vastly different game than Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous is an amazingly fun game to play. I had a blast playing it, and it brought me back to the days of when I played it in my past, when I was a wee little ass. <laughs> um, and it, it is vastly different in the way things are handled. Um, I'm sure the damage models and things are going to come online little by little, as of right now, nothing is as, it, it doesn't have as high a fidelity as even the Arena Commander is going to have. And this is going to be out very soon. One of the things I do like about Elite is it will work on my Mac. And although I have some inside information from a couple of people at Stars, you know, at uh, Cloud Imperium Games that this game will work on a Mac, um, the difference is, Elite Dangerous will run on a Mac, and I need to build a Cray computer for Star Citizen to run on. Vastly different products, and both in their own right are going to be amazing. So I just wanted to bring that out. Um, there's another piece that I want to talk about, the dogfighting module, just to close out this episode, and then we'll get on to an interview with James Pugh. And that's Arena Commander is going to be launched with bugs. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be buggy. There's no doubt about that, right? So when you're looking at this game in the future and you're playing it and there's a bug, please, please, please be, um, be, be mature, be helpful. Um, don't give problems, try to, you know, without pointing out where, when, what was happening at the time. The team wants to squash the bugs, 
And this is not a completed game. You're coming in at an alpha, a piece where most games, most of you don't ever see. And there will probably be bugs in the game even up until just before launch in 18 months. This is a huge endeavor that Cloud Imperium Games is taking on. So when this game launches, instead of inundating um, the message boards with, and, and this doesn't happen in, in uh, the Star Citizen community at this point, but I'm just trying to caution you to be as amazing as you've all been so far. Help the team to make that game better for all of us. So we've got an opportunity that no other game has given people in the past, and that's to take part in it from start to finish, from concept to alpha to beta to release to all the updates. And let's do this in a well, well, let's do this in the best way we can. Let's be the best damn community ever, okay? So that's all I got for you today. Stay tuned for James Pugh. The interview only goes about 30 minutes, and it was amazing. And then after that, I've stolen a confession from my um, Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous thread in the den. So if you're a subscriber, you go out there and you can leave one, and you can have that right on the show too. And if you go out to StarCitizenAA.com and leave it in the forums over there in the thread, you might have it read. And we'll be starting up another contest as soon as I get in touch with Sandy, Ben, Chelsea, who's ever going to talk to us this month. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you all next week. You have a wonderful time. And be safe out there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another SCAA. This is another one of my favorite type of episodes. It's going to be an interview. And I have James Pugh with us here today. He has been hired on. I'm going to have him give us his um, official title. I call him the uh, deputy banhammer person, but <laughs> that's not exactly what he's doing. Hello, James. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's, well, thank you guys. I mean, <laughs> it's wonderful how um, transparent and involved with the community that you all have been. That's crazy, right? Yeah. It is. So when you look in the corporate directory, which you know, kind of is weird saying because you guys don't have don't operate like a typical corporation. What's your title? Assistant community manager. Okay. And I now know from listening to Sonny's Diner, because you were on <laughs> his show, that you've had kind of a job like this before. What, where did you work prior to this? I uh, worked at PlayStation, Sony Computer Entertainment America, in the online services department, which was kind of a mixture of kind of what uh, Will does with uh, moderating and more network stability testing and stuff like that. Okay, and we'll get into your aspirations after that. So <laughs> my, my uh, conversations take on a format that I used to have on my Addicted Gamer podcast. So I start off with your history. So I, I know the answer to this from Sunny's Diner, but we're going to go into it. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about the first computer your family owned? Uh, first computer my family owned? Oh, yeah. man, it was a piece of crap. It was. I think my dad had – because at one point my dad was working as a professional mover. Yeah. And I believe he just was moving someone out and they had this old computer. And it must have been when I was maybe 10 or 11. And it was using floppy disks and like not like the, you know, like the three and a half quarter floppy disks, like the ones that were actually floppy disks. Yeah. And oh, the, the big five-inch one? Oh, yeah. Oh, my Lord. You're not oh, that yeah. old. I'm not, but that's the computer he got. Holy cow. And <laughs> yeah. this is a computer that he brought back and plugged in the home? Yeah. What essentially did you guys do with something like that? I didn't do I mean, I just clicked around on stuff. Like I didn't really do anything with it because I didn't know how to use it. And oh. yeah, I don't, we just didn't have a lot of money to buy computers when I was growing up. I remember the first computer we actually got that you know was usable <laughs> was... I must have been like 13 or 14, and I remember getting on, no, I was younger than that, because I remember at my old house, I was like 10 or 11, like right after that computer, we got kind of an older, older, newer computer, and I could go on America Online. I remember having to stand through that, and my name was Stunner99. <laughs> wow. I had you pegged, pegged in your mid to early 30s the most. No, I'm 26. Yeah, well, mid 20s, I mean. Mid twenties uh, to yeah. early thirties most. So you're twenty six. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So when you are saying AOL, that's that's like an old person's. <laughs> you know, it's like I remember being a member of AOL, but I got 
rid of that real quick and went to Earthlink because I was so much cooler, you know? <laughs> I remember yeah. AOL. I remember getting my parents getting mad that the phone line was, like, caught up in AOL when no one, no one could make calls. Okay. Did you have a computer or a console that you first started playing games on? Console. Console? I played, yeah, I played consoles all throughout when I was a kid. And uh, tell us a little bit of the story that you told on Sonny's about how you got your first console. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, my sister had um, a, a regular Nintendo, okay. and I must have been three or four. I walked into her room, and I saw her playing Mario 3, and that's kind of like where my life kind of changed, and my affinity for video games kind of came from. And then eventually, because she's 12 years older than me, 12. so at the time, yeah, she was, you know, 16, 17 at the time, and then she just didn't want it anymore, and she gave it to me, and I played that thing so much. Like, <laughs> I played that until I got a Super Nintendo, like, and... Later. All right, so, and your sister was 12, and you took, pretty much got to take her Nintendo. What were the games that you played besides uh, Super Mario 3? On um, the regular Nintendo, I played, played like all, I went back and played all the old Mario games, like 1 and 2. Oh, so this is the NES, so I totally missed that. The original yeah, this is, this is the okay. NES, yeah. Okay. And are you, were you a Nintendo person from then on for a while? Pretty much, I was. I got the regular Nintendo, then the Super Nintendo, then the 64, and then somewhere along the lines, I got the PlayStation. I think I got the PlayStation in, two, in 1999, and then the PlayStation 2 came out, what, two years after that, so. Okay. So, could you remember a time when you were playing a game, and this, is, this kind of shows the addiction I talk about, and I don't want to talk <laughs> about addiction, because obviously I'll actually can work real jobs and make money and take care of families, right? But yeah. Could you remember that first game that you played where you look outside and all of a sudden it's morning? Yeah, Star Fox 64. Star Fox on the 64? Oh, yeah. Every time I think about that first game, I can't remember the name of it. It was on an Amiga I had. And uh, my roommate and I had this multiplayer game that you drove little you know, 2D sprite tanks around and yeah. you know, killed each other. It was actually isometric, but it was... It, it was like we looked outside and like, oh, God, we have to be to aeronautics in like 20 minutes. <laughs> so it was bad. Mine um, was, my mom would always say, oh, you have, you know, I was always at a bedtime. And I don't know what happened at some point when I got the N64. I guess she just stopped caring because I was always sneaking out. I was always waking up to play games in the middle of the night anyways. Oh. So I remember playing Star Fox for days, weekends, just doing nothing but playing Star Fox. And you mentioned that you finished that game quite a number of times. Oh yeah, and I was there was this there was this rumor. Well, this rumor. Okay, so I remember at this Toys R Us, this random Toys R Us we used to go to. They had the unofficial Star Fox uh, strategy guide. Yeah. And in it, it said that there was a secret level that if you got all the medals on the expert um, difficulty setting and all the planets, and you beat the game again, you would go to some like secret level. Yeah. So like my summer was just it was dedicated to doing that. Just that's all I was doing for a whole summer. And then finally when I actually did it, there was no secret level. Oh. <laughs> so it was a giant bummer, but <laughs> that was yeah, that was a summer that I uh, I, I I'll go ahead and say it was a summer I wasted playing Star Fox 64. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I guess in my youth it was about listening to one of the Beatles albums backwards to see if Paul was really dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he was alive. <laughs> um, so you, you move forward from there and you're going to college. At, at which point you're studying what in college? Uh, poli sci and writing. Okay. And, wow, that's kind of, they go along together as long as you're going to be an attorney or that was poet. the that was the plan. Yeah, that's and there's a there's a very big left turn from there. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I took the LSATs, I, in between when I took the LSATs and when I got my score, I got the job at Sony. So I said, never mind to be trying to be an attorney, and went to go work at Sony. My uh, my mom was a little mad, but <laughs> well, now you're working for the uh, for CIG, and they're going to bring us the best. And I'm not even going to say the best. Damn, Damn. Space simulator. I'm going to say the best game that was ever made. <laughs> yeah, this go ahead and t tell my mom that. Maybe that'll make her feel better. <laughs> oh, she, she will at some point. She will. Um, not that games are, are things that parents always hold their heads up about, but she will. Um, so you're in college, and are you gaming still? But if you're taking LSATs and passing them, you're probably studying a lot more, right? I study a lot, but I played a lot of games in college. In college is kind of where I fell in love with uh, Super Smash Brothers. Okay. 
like I played melee in like tournaments and stuff. Like that's still like my best competitive game, even though kind of died out. Sorry. That's still on the Nintendo, right? That was yeah, the GameCube. Yeah, the GameCube, probably the best Nintendo device made. I, it's, that's one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, for me it was Rogue Squadron, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome too. And then I played a lot of World of Warcraft in college, like a lot of World of Warcraft. A lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, that was another one where, like, weekends were just that's all that was happening. And like, there's we're in a dorm with you know six people, and all of us are on our computers playing World of Warcraft. Oh, and Ghost Caller left. Um, Blizzard, and he wasn't saying where he was going. I was like, please go to CIG, please go to CIG. And then, you know, I'm like, well, why would he go there? (laughs) I guess he wound up at Riot. Yeah, Um, yeah, I was a big MMO player, obviously. I mean, that's what I got into. I mean, the the EverQuest and Star Wars Galaxies, and then WoW, and now I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting for the next best thing to come out, hopefully soon. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm not traditionally like a big MMO guy, but WoW is probably the only one I've really, really got into. Um, Because it's like, I didn't, you know, I didn't grow up with computers that could play them. And so I never really got attached to them. But then my my doormates and the rest of my college friends started playing and I was like, all right, well, let's just play this then. And that consumed probably the first two or three years of college. (laughs) Okay. So when you were growing up, did you play PC games at all? Um, Besides, Besides WoW? Like... Or was WoW your foray into that? Um, when I was younger, like I would play like SimCity and stuff. Like okay. um, I was in the kind of the simulation stuff for a while, but because it didn't require a lot of graphical <laughs> fidelity. Yeah. And did so, you did you know about Chris's games at all? Yeah, um, I've been a, like just from because I've studied the industry for a lot. Like I don't know, it's kind of like my, my thing. And then Chris Roberts was a name I knew, and I knew the reverence for the Wing Commander games. Okay. So, you get this job at Sony, and what were your initial responsibilities there? And how Online. much did you love working there? No. <laughs> Online moderation, and I liked it. You know, okay. it's it was weird because it was a twenty-four hour department, so we had three shifts, and the shifts were all really weird. Like it was five in the morning till two p.m., uh, two p.m. till eleven p.m., and then. 5 p.m. to or no 8 p.m. till 5 a.m. So it was like no one was working a nine to five in that department. Okay. Which was takes a little bit to get used to, but I liked it. Right. So what kind of calls did you get there? Or you said online moderation, so you're actually yeah. looking at the tickets that come into the help desk, kind of like what Chelsea does. Kind of. Like, mine was more, it was active moderation, playing oh, the game, okay. going into looking at grief reports. Um, I'm not sure how much I can actually say because. All right, let's not. Yeah, there's kind uh, of still a, a really kind of crazy NDA I had to sign. <laughs> all right, let's not push that. <laughs> so essentially, you're doing online moderation, and you're saying mm-hmm. playing the game, and those weren't mm-hmm. multiplayer games at the time, right? Yeah, so like um, basically, one of our biggest games was like Killzone, Resistance, oh, like cool. Little Big Planet, like those types of games. All right, so the first part, the first party Sony online games. Right. So you got a lot of perks at Sony. Yeah, we got cheap games and end up getting free games. Got cool sh- swag every now and then. They had this really cool thing they would do every um, summer where they take everyone in the building out to Del Mar. And in San Diego, there's this Del Mar racetrack. It's a giant, huge like fairgrounds slash racetrack area, and they would bring us all down there and have food, catered food and drinks and stuff. It was a lot of fun. All right. So what's your favorite um, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, 3, 4 game, whichever one you had? Uh, my favorite PlayStation game? Yeah. Metal Gear Solid 2. It's probably it's my favorite game of all time too. So, <laughs> so much better than what the new one is, right? Do, do the you, new one's rough. Yeah, thank God it's only thirty bucks. <laughs> yeah, rough and short. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's just that's that's the type, that's not what I play Metal Gear for. Like I don't play Metal Gear for like the actual. I know it's weird to say, but like yeah. the, how tight the gameplay is. I play it for like the how ludicrous the storyline is. God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, wind up getting a PlayStation 4? Yes. You did? Yes. Okay. And an Xbox One or just one? Haven't got an Xbox One yet, but I am going to. Yeah, that's what I say. I got the 4 first because it made sense. Yeah. It's cheaper and better for the time, and it had the games I wanted. Um, so let's go a little bit forward. So at some point, you're at Sony, and did you? He- how did you hear about the job at CIG? The job? Um... I just, I kind of wanted a change. Like, I wanted to kind of move or 
progress. Like I felt like I wasn't, you know, I felt like I was doing, I was stagnant in my position. And then I just kept looking at job boards. There's a bunch of job boards for, you know, the video game industry. People should, if they really want to get in the industry, there's plenty of places to look. Gama Sutra is a big one, but there's a bunch of smaller ones you can look at. And then I found CIG and just saw it and was like, well, I could probably do this. So I, I applied for it. <laughs> And uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, process you went through to get the to get your job. Like when I think about who I work for and the process I went through to get the job I have, it is something I'll remember forever. Because when I got that letter, I was like, "Oh, that's so awesome!" Because I never expected my company to hire me. It's a so, good feeling, huh? Oh God, yeah. So tell me a little <laughs> bit about this. So I applied and then didn't hear anything back for a good two or three weeks. And it's like one of those things you're like, oh, well, you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, I tried. I'll, you know, I'll move on, try and find something else. And then I got an email from Ben um, asking me if I could do like a Skype interview. And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, you know, it was this big thing for me because it was probably the first callback I had got since uh, trying to find something else. So I set that up and then I had a phone interview or Skype interview with Ben and after – not very long. He's, we were just talking about games and stuff, and like, because I did my research beforehand, like I looked you up who he was and everything, and then he asked me if I would be willing to come out here to do an in-person interview with him and Sandy, and I was like, of course. <laughs> um, so then I did that, and I came out here and did the interview, and they gave me the job. That's pretty big. By the time they have you meet in person, they already know that they are ready, right? I mean, in these days. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So, grats on the job. It was <laughs> Thank you of, so much. Oh, you're welcome. It was kind of a shock when I, I heard because I had just left there and met Will, and then two weeks later, there you are. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was there when all of you guys were there so I could have met you all. Um, so, how long did it take you to get acclimated? Because when people look at the Santa Monica office, they don't realize that how segregated you are from everybody else in that room, right? Oh, in our own little room? <laughs> yeah. Because everybody else seems to be out there in the open with Chris overseeing the, seeing them in Sandy's office mm -hmm. off to the side. And then, you know, the other two offices are over there with uh, um, David and I forget the other guy's name. And then the one that Chris Smith and David Hobbins use. And yeah. you guys are like in the back with the customer support team and stuff. Yeah. They've got us in this back room with uh, CS is here. Uh, me, Ben, and Will are here. Yeah. IT IT's here. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, go ahead, sorry. Kind of tight, squeezed in there. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of room anymore. We yeah. uh, kind of taking it all up. It's just kind of like the catch-all room. Like the everything in that main room is just so many, you know, um, developers and coders and artists, and like they're doing all the heavy lifting in this back room. And it's the room where we're trying to make it easier for them. Yeah. So it's nice fix. Really busy. Now, I know that everybody in the other room is busy, but have you have you gone out there and like met everybody? How long did it take you to meet everybody and know their names? It took me a while, and it didn't help that everyone has, since I got here, since the moment I got here, everyone's been crunching. For, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you want to introduce yourself and be affable, but, you know, they're, you don't want to take them away from what they're doing. So slowly you start to talk to people and know their names and hang out with them, and you talk to them at lunch and stuff, so... To answer your original question, how long did it take me to get acclimated? Like, yeah. huh, I'm, I think I'm almost there. <laughs> okay, almost there. I don't know. When I walked in that office, the way that Chris and, you know, um, Ben and Will and everybody there greeted me, I felt like, wow, if you worked there, it would have been like this environment that, you know, within a week you'd feel like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I feel that way. But, yeah. I, you know, it's always I want to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right. And everyone here is super nice and very inviting and eager to answer questions okay i asked that question because you're you know you're a mom i know that will's the lead moderator but as an assistant community manager you talk a lot with people and you're you know you're helping to manage the whole community mm -hmm. so knowing like if you get questions or things that you can't answer knowing who the people are in the other room and what they do that's helpful right yeah and getting their input and, you know, being able to go to them when they're not working 24-7 to get, you know, a module out for the game, it, it helps your job with us, you know, because we could be demanding at times. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we try and know everything we can about 
the product at all times. So okay. we want to know where the art's at. We want to know where the code, the development's at. We want to know where the UI's at. Just so if we do have questions, we know where to, to put those, like to lead them. Okay. So let's take a step back. Mm -hmm. When what was your first? Um, when did you first hear about Star Citizen? It was 2012. I was listening to a podcast I love. I used to, well, it doesn't exist anymore, but I used to love called Weekend Confirmed with uh, Garnet Lee, Jeff Kanata, um, Jeff Mattis, and others. And Jeff Mattis was one of the guys. His name's Indy Jeff on Twitter. Shout out for him. Okay. Um, he was talking about it. He brought us our attention to it to the Kickstarter originally, and he was so passionate about it that that's when I looked into it and saw just how much it was taking off and then I kept like a every now and then every like week or so I checked back in to see what was happening I was just f constantly floored <laughs> at how much money was being raised so that's when I kind of took and said well I should probably take I should probably keep an eye on this because I said it before and I, I hate almost like a broken record but it's just this has never really happened before so to never. be a part of this it was, was kind of like almost a dream come true because you get because a lot of people want to be in the industry and a lot of people do get it to be in the industry not a lot of people get to do something that's never be a part of something that's never been done before and to be one of those people who can be on the ground floor and say after after everything's done be like yeah i was there it was kind of crazy yeah i'm doing it my own way just creating my own little piece of it so i can steal some thunder from you guys oh no 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 we Run need you hotels. we need you and people like you to do this stuff because yeah. you make it worth it cool um, so, were you a fan of that space genre? Uh, yeah, I love. <laughs> it's as where I might get in trouble. I a poor medieval fantasy. <laughs> like I just don't like it. <laughs> but I love sci-fi. What about like, when sci-fi is mixed with that medieval stuff, like <sighs> Star <then> Wars? <laughs> see, and that's just it. If you made me choose between Star Wars and Star Trek, I'd pick Star Trek every time. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh, I love Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, that's my that's my number one. Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Trek. It depends on which uh, show. Hey, say hi. You didn't say hi. Who be that? <laughs> it's Kami. It's Kami. Did Project coordinator. Know. Okay, so um, oh my God, that totally threw me off. See how bad I am. <laughs> I could right. stay on poor. I could stay on point. So you heard about Star Citizen. So mm -hmm. what part of the game interested you the most before you came to the uh, came to CIG? Uh, Squadron 42. So you like the scripted, see that's what drew, drew me in at first, the scripted, mm -hmm. or the dynamic campaign, single player or multi, right? there'll be a multiplayer part of it, but. Yeah, it's co-op. Yeah. So that did, so have you gone back to good old games and downloaded or purchased any of Chris's old games? I actually have. I purchased the first four, the first four numbered Wing Commanders. Have you played through them? I have not. I'm actually saving them for uh, a charity event that I was going to stream um, all of them out. When is that going to happen? I'm not certain yet, but hopefully I'll have something to say soon. <laughs> what charity? Um, Child's Play. Child's Play? Mm -hmm. Do you want help with that? Absolutely. <laughs> I could, I could uh, bring as many as, of my uh, viewers as I can over there to watch it. Yeah, cool. It'd be fun. Um, I've I've done stuff for that charity before, and I don't know. It just seems like it'd be fun. I've always wanted to stream. I've never actually streamed, besides for my PlayStation Four, because it's just so easy. You just click one button or hit one oh, button. God, so awesome. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Yeah. But I've always wanted to stream, and I just think, well, if I stream for twenty four hours and take donations for charity, it'll be really fun. Yeah. I'll be tired, but it'll be fun. It is tiring. I just helped the uh, ladies of the round table um, stream for op Operation Supply Drop, and I streamed for an hour and a half, and moderated for a little bit and I was exhausted. Yeah. Of course I worked a 10 hour day and had another 10 hour day the next day. But Ugh, That's but, rough. Oh, man, it's weekends and it's graduation. Who I work for needs me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so I'm very closely not saying their name. I can't <laughs> say it anymore. Um, so wait, let's move on from there. So mm -hmm. we, have, we have the game. Oh, and I'm going to come back. When you're done with that streaming, I want to hit you for a short interview and see you got to play through it and really listen to everything, so you're not going to get through more than two of the games. Okay. All right, because it's a Chris game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's the missions and the things that are going to be in it are going to be really interesting to listen to. I played through Wing Commander 1 again, and oh my lord, just playing through it once. And I, I didn't do it where I won every mission this time. I just played it the way it was, and I saw things that I didn't see 20 years ago or whenever that was. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. Years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you uh, you saw Star Citizen. You had this. Was it uh, th the question that I have here? Was it the crowdfunding and the you know pandemonia, the 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 excitement around the game that brought you in, or was it the game itself? To start, it was the pandemonium. Okay. <laughs> it was just the sheer craziness of what was going on. Um, and then once I started investigating and I started I started reading a lot about the lore. That's what kind of originally drew me into actually um, the game part of it, was reading about the Vandal and the Banu, or the Banu and the Xi'an. Um, okay. Just reading all the lore they had on that, because that's the stuff I really love. Like yeah, Excellent. Yeah, I like love my favorite. David's work is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's really good. Like my favorite, uh, when I think of my favorite sci-fi universes, they're generally books, like book series. Like I really like the Ender series and uh, the Hyperion Cantos books. Okay. And like how involved the backstory is for the most minuscule thing is really interesting to me. Right. And uh, so the lore is going to get you. So you will get into the player universe big time then because that's where he's going to be able to build more of that. Oh, yeah. All right. So, um... Thank you for being honest with that, the pandemonium, because for me it was the game itself. Because oh, that's awesome. All that history of playing Chris's games, I saw, and at first I have to admit, at first when I was watching Scott Manley's video, who should be doing um, interviews of you guys because he's amazing, um, I was watching one of his videos and he just mentioned Star Citizen, something that Chris Roberts was doing, and I'm like, oh great, Chris Roberts is like Richard Branson now trying to go to the moon. <laughs> and I thought he was making real spaceships and then <laughs> he mentioned it again and I was like I went over there and I watched the video and it was the worst time of the year the kids are just you know getting ready to go back to school so I was empty on cash and I'm like I gotta get in this game <laughs> so for me it was you know I, as soon as I saw it was Chris it was like that was it but different age groups between you and I I'm not twice your age, but close <laughs> to twice your age. So, you know, I played his games when they came out for the first time. Um, as we're coming to the end of the interview, because I like to set, do these as setups for things that I'm going to do later on. Like, I, you, you see how I get Ben on Skype and say, hey, could I talk to you? I'm going to do that mm -hmm. to you, too. It's Absolutely. Good. Feel free. Good. Thank you. It's good to build that rapport. But I, I'm... In the getting to know you, so you've been there for what, like a month now, right? Two months? Two months. Two months. Two months. All right. And I know what Ben does there. So what does the assistant do? Like what exactly does the, ass the assistant community manager do? Basically the stuff that makes Ben's life easier. <laughs> like I generally now I put up all the posts, like all the videos. I write the pros. And I do a lot of like the other little things. Like I've been doing the fan spotlights, and I've been taking care of our social media. Um, so you're the one I can complain to that I didn't appear in a fan spotlight yet. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just so I know, I'm gonna write that down. Okay. Keep okay. Going. Keep going. Okay. Social media, go on. <laughs> Yeah, I know the social media handle the outreach. I um, reach out to other podcasts and you know other sort of projects that have gone on with with uh, the game. Good. Um, like the first thing I did, my first, I think it was my first day, or my second day, I made a spreadsheet of all the podcasts I could find and all the contact information. Then kind of reached out to them as we got along. Um, because Ben's usually doing a lot of the design stuff now. Right, um, and that's so what a lot I was of, looking for. Yeah, Ben does a lot of the design stuff. So a lot of the community management stuff, the, ben, the stuff Ben used to do, I have a lot of time for, is now what I, I do. Good. Because, you know, he's got, Ben's, Ben's pretty busy. Yeah. So this is what I want to say. So for all of you watching this right now, remember, before you go to Ben, make sure you talk to Mr. Pew. <laughs> yeah. If you need something, James. talk to me. Ben yeah. will never turn you down because Ben's the nicest man on the planet. Right. But If you want this game to get done, if you want him to get out his jump point articles <laughs> and everything else, talk to James. And from what I've seen, um, our conversations on Skype and stuff, you're always answering whenever I have a question. So that's great. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. All right. Um, so you guys went out on a limb. <laughs> And you said, you know, Chris and I guess Eric and the other guys that are in charge of this dogfighting module, Arena Commander, said it's coming out on the 29th. Mm -hmm. So we know that they're all in this 24-7 thing where they're testing and, and squashing bugs and getting things done. But you're going to have 
to have some kind of a build up too because when that goes live you're going to have three things that happen in your group right mm -hmm. you're going to have to be ready for all of those comments that are going to come without fail in the general chat in the different parts right oh yeah and you're going to have to help those other wonderful folks down the hall right or oh yeah across the room alexis um chelsea who's the other person back there so alexis, uh, alexis chelsea, chelsea Le and who else Alexis and Chelsea are the ones that are handling all the CS right now. Okay. And, you know, so what type of measures are you guys taking over the next two weeks to be ready for your group? We're doing a couple of things. Um, to answer your, to, to your question, the comments and everything, that will be largely Will's job. Will will be in there with his team of moderators trying to make sure that's under control because you have, you have the right to express dissatisfaction, but make sure it's, you know, you still got to make sure it's polite and not against the forum rules. The stuff with uh, Chelsea and Alexis will all be kind of picking up on some CS stuff as we deem it necessary. You know, right. if it's backed up, we, Will or I or someone else will get in there and Ben, Ben's usually always in there too. Um, and then from me and Ben, we kind of want to get everyone excited, try and create a sense of, you know, this isn't the end, you know, this isn't the, this isn't the end of that tunnel, but right. it's almost like there's a new light source, um, that people are starting to see a little bit of the light. So we want to, you know, we want to make people feel like, all right, you know, this is a bigger, this is a big deal. Like that's, you guys gave us money and we're finally showing, we're, we're showing you something the real that we're really excited to show you and that we hope you guys are all excited too. So yeah, there's gotcha. some, yeah, there's some, there's a lot of work to be done, but we've, got it pretty we're, we're pretty well situated for it okay now arena commander comes out but the next module out was supposed to be the social module do you know if that's still on track to be the next one out i believe it is still the next one to come out or it might be the um boarding module i'm not certain um i'm fact, not sure the first person module is okay we'll leave that for eric to so. yeah th i think there's a um or is it then the tenth for the chairman today or going up okay ten for the chairman monday may 19th which think, will be uh, out before the sayers <laughs> yes uh chris okay. uh chris outlines something that's going on with uh, that all right that's cool so we'll see that later on at six o'clock which should be happening pretty in a half an hour in yeah half an hour. 5.30. Okay. Wow, it's 5.30 already? we got to wrap this up. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Well, you, no okay, which one of the, uh, there's going to be some major cons that go on this year that you guys are all going to be taking part in. Mm -hmm. So, which one, which of the ones are you going to be going to? Um, I will be at E3. Um, I will be at, s I'm not certain yet where else I'm going to be. Uh, I know Ben will be the one that will be at Pretty much all of them. Game will be Ben will be at Gamescom. Ben will be pretty much everywhere. <laughs> they'll send Ben to any, they'll send Ben anywhere. I'll be helping you guys out at Dragon Con as long as that stays on. Yeah. No, yeah. If I were going to that, I'm sure Ben will be there. All right. So for all the other things that James talked about, I want people to go and look up Sunny's Diner, and you can find that right in the fan. What is that area called? The fan fiction area or where we put our podcast oh on. yes yeah um believe yeah there's under the fan fiction section that's actually it was the first uh yeah uh, that was actually the first forum i actually went to when i got the job just so because i wanted to put yeah. together a spotlight yeah so you can see what he talked about on sunny's diner i want to pimp their podcasts um, because they do an amazing job the se next thing i want to ask you before we go is mm -hmm. because people asked me what what is that headset ben is using i know these people are going to ask me what the you're headset? using. Yeah. What what headset are you using? Uh, I don't know. This is the one they gave me. Hold on. Let me see. Hey, Dennis. What's my headset called? What's my headset? It's a um, Mad Cat's Triton. Mad Cat's Triton. Okay. That's good to know because they're, <laughs> they are going to ask. All right. Mad Cat's. Hmm. Mad Cat's Triton, it looks like. Wait. So, Mad Cat's, the same people that make the X55 Rhino. Maybe. Maybe. I like that little... Uh, <laughs> so maybe that could be the Star Citizen uh, POTUS. Maybe. Do you play poker? Yes, I do. <laughs> You're not good at bluffing, are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good, baby. Okay. All right, maybe. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I got for you today. I'm sure that we'll be hitting you back. Now that I've met you and we've talked, I'm sure that I'll be 
bothering you instead of Ben for a lot of the things I bother him for. Feel free. Hey, it's okay. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Anything you want to say before we go to everyone out there? Uh, to the stars. And beyond? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. This is going to sound strange, but obsessing over this game can be healthy. Like many others, I have pledged many times the cost of a retail game, mostly November 2013. But it was within my budget. Thought at the time it meant more PC upgrades for a long time. Since then, I have somehow become frugal, not sure if this is the right term, and stopped wasting my money day to day. My morning coffee, or three, is limited to special occasions. I'm taking my own lunch, or skipping, drinking water versus other purchased drinks, and have stopped buying newspapers, magazines, and other games, takeaway, etc. I don't think it was any type of guilt that started it, but rather a subconscious reasoning. I wanted to spend more on the game. I have also lost a bit of weight, around 10 kilograms. Of course, ship sales have been very sparse, so I have built up quite a kitty. My conservative efforts put it about $2,000. In reality, closer to 3 k in the last seven months, and that's taking into consideration my subscription here. I am holding off on my PC upgrades until later this year, or possibly next year. Depends on how enjoyable the game is on my current PC. But estimate when I get around to it that I will be getting a beast. Might even get a new tablet to enable me to make good use of work travel time on the train to catch up on news and plan missions. Point of this all is, well, no real point. We just need another ship sale. I missed out on the Starfarer and Retaliator last time. I just thought I would share. Thank you.